Underneath the caudate are bundles of fibers forming part of the radiating crown, the corona radiata. Fibers between cortex and thalamus form the thalamic radiation. If we take away more white matter and overlaying cortex, maybe we can follow some of the fibers in the radiating crown into the cortex. It is important not to be too timid during this process. Projection fibers are intersecting with commissural fibers at this level, so we have to force our way. Now we will remove the thalamus, part of hypothalamus and most of mesencephalon, leaving only the base of the peduncle, where the descending corticopontine and corticospinal fibers are located. In the end, we will expose the entire internal capsule, but it has to be done carefully, and this will take some time. We have now exposed the internal capsule from the medial side. Here is the anterior commissure, underneath the anterior limb of the internal capsule. And we scraped away also the dorsal part of mesencephalon, all the way down to the base of the peduncle. The descending fibers embedded in this lamina white substance are corticopontine fibers, corticonuclear fibers, and corticospinal fibers. I'd like to draw your attention to an interesting topographic relationship related to the corticospinal fibers forming the pyramidal tract. The gene of the internal capsule forms a semicircular line like this. This is the anterior limb of the internal capsule where many fiber bundles have a horizontal direction. Here is the posterior limb of the internal capsule where the fibers have a more vertical direction. The pyramidal tract comes primarily from the region of the central sulcus, some from postcentral gyrus, but the majority from primary motor cortex in precentral gyrus. The fibers should descend about here towards the genu and then the posterior limb of the internal capsule to reach the middle third of the base of the peduncle. It's easy to appreciate that the location of the pyramidal tract is located mainly in the posterior limb of the internal capsule. However, at dorsal levels, the position of the pyramidal tract is close to the genu of the internal capsule. If we come further down in the internal capsule, the pyramidal tract is located further and further back in the posterior limb of the internal capsule. The superior occipitofrontal fasciculus, which has been described as an association bundle in anatomical textbooks for more than a century, is supposed to be located in the subcallosal area between the corpus callosum and the caudate nucleus. However, it appears that the structure known as the superior occipitofrontal fasciculus is a case of mistaken identity. The caudate nucleus has been removed in order to expose the thalamic radiation. The telacoridea has been flipped over backwards to expose the thalamus. The radiation of the corpus callosum has been transected as far laterally as possible in order to get a good view of the subcallosal area. As suggested recently by Dr. Ugur Thüre, who based his discovery on carefully dissected human brains, 
using Klingler's freeze-thaw procedure, fibers in the thalamic radiation have in all likelihood been misinterpreted as the superior occipitofrontal fasciculus. This is Dr. Turer's explanation. Some of the vertically oriented fiber bundles in the thalamic radiation make a sharp turn and assume a horizontal orientation underneath the corpus callosum before they continue in the direction of the frontal lobe. Here are typical examples of such longitudinal bundles containing projection fibers, which, taken out of context, are easily mistaken for being part of a subcallosal association bundle. This distinctive anatomical feature may create problems for neuroradiologists attempting to confirm the existence of a superior occipitofrontal fasciculus using in vivo tractography.